Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith, and today we'll discuss why the Bible refers to God as a consuming fire. There seems to be some real confusion over this one, so let's start by getting the relevant Bible verses out in the open. Beware, lest thou ever forget the covenant of the Lord thy God, which he hath made with thee, and make to thyself a graven likeness of those things which the Lord hath forbid to be made, because the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Deuteronomy 4, 23-24 A people great and tall, the sons of the Anasims, whom thou hast seen, and heard of, against whom no man is able to stand. Thou shalt know therefore this day that the Lord thy God himself will pass over before thee, a devouring and consuming fire, to destroy and extirpate, and bring them to nothing before thy face quickly, as he hath spoken to thee. Deuteronomy 9, 2-3 Therefore receiving an immovable kingdom, we have grace, whereby let us serve, pleasing God with fear and reverence, for our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12 28 to 29. The first and last verses focus mainly on our obligation to treat God with reverence and obedience because of the serious consequences of sin. But the second is more specific, offering an explanation of what this means and explaining how God destroyed the enemies of his people. This image of God as fire, however, can be an issue for we humans. After all, although fire is powerful and important, it also hurts a lot especially when you get too close, while keeping your distance from fire is usually best for the ideal amount of warmth and light. A consuming fire is a fire that consumes things instead of just providing light and heat, however. So doesn't this paint a picture of a wicked creature devouring people as they get too close? The description at first seems to apply more to the classical depictions of demons than to God. Well, keep in mind that of these three verses, only the second gives us any indication of what God consumes, and in that verse, all he destroys are evildoers. Are there any other clues about what God consumes in this way? In fact, there are many other major clues. Let me just refer to two. In 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah prays to God to send fire to burn up a sacrifice, and it does so, consuming the sacrifice, as well as the drenched wood under it, and a trench full of water around that. In Daniel chapter 3, Daniel's three faithful friends are placed into a furnace, and kept in the middle of a blazing fire that actually killed the people who threw them in, but they're completely unharmed. This is what is meant by the phrase, consuming fire. It doesn't mean that God is a fire that consumes things or people indiscriminately, but only that he can be dangerous and isn't to be messed around with. Now, why would this be? Because of his holiness. The very same perfection that makes it impossible for God to do evil also makes him completely just, and that means that he acts to bring about justice on all evil that he approaches. It's part of his nature. Now, almost all people commit sins, and therefore almost all are guilty of evil, which is why the sacrifice of Jesus is so important. As we see in the verses about Elijah, no amount of water can protect a person from the fire of God, but the sacrifice of Jesus and the purification of baptism and confession can. These things pay the debt for our sins, applying that payment to us, and allowing us to be preserved by the mercy of God. St. Paul explains the whole process. Every man's work shall be manifest, for the day of the Lord shall declare it, because it shall be revealed in fire, and the fire shall try every man's work, of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work burn, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. 1 Corinthians 3, 13-15 so, God is like a consuming fire, because of the way his justice and our sins interact. But faithfulness and the mercy of God can make that fire a saving and protecting fire, rather than a harmful one. In short, sin is dangerous, but God is not some cosmic horror consuming people who get too close to him. Next, can the saints in heaven still have free will? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.